Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be repotting three of my orchids that didn't do so well in semi-hydro with Lekka into a system with a combination of pumice and Lekka. I tested out the properties of pumice recently and it seems to be fairly water retentive but I've, having spoken to people that have used it in self-watering systems or in systems with orchids, it doesn't seem to have some of the negative properties that Lekka has in terms of the drying effect on the roots that hit the top layer. So I thought it'd be interesting to try because the orchids I've got in front of me have a real issue with the dry top layer of Lekka, it seems. So this is my Sideria jabonica crossed with Rhynchostylis gigantea. Now I believe that this is the Sideria japonica minmaru or miniature version because of the size and compact nature of the plant. The actual Sideria japonica full size is bigger than this plant and the Rhynchostylis gigantea is much bigger. So for this cross to be this small, I believe it must be inheriting traits from the miniature version of the Sideria japonica. The Sideria japonica miniature I have found to be particularly fussy and it does need a lot of moisture and it does not like lacquer. And this cross seems to have inherited that trait, even though the full-size Sideria japonica doesn't mind lacquer quite as much. This is a very fussy little orchid. It's also known as the Rinkerida's Dragon Charmy, I believe. Rinkerida's Dragon Charmy, something like that. Uh, I'll put the name up on screen, the alternate name. Yeah, it's currently potted in pure moss. It's doing very well. Um, the only issue I have is the algae buildup at the top. I often have to pick the top layer of moss off because if algae builds up too much and the roots hit it, they hate it, they desiccate. You can see where it's desiccated before and it's pushing a new root tip out. So I thought that I would just repot this because I could put a top layer of bark on, uh, which was kind of my next plan. But having thought about it, I think that it might be quite a good idea to try out the uh, pumice setup with this particular orchid. I think the properties might match up quite well to what it seems to like, which is a lot of moisture without a dry top layer, but also a lot of airiness because it um, obviously it's going to inherit traits from the Rhynchostylis gigantea parent. So I'm a little bit nervous about keeping it in full moss in a larger setup without extra aeration. It's got perlite and lecker in this pot. So I'm going to try that out and see how it goes. Also my Cattleya violacea rosea variety dark lip is another very fussy one that I've noticed really hated a pure lacquer mix in semi-hydro. The roots here are ones that came out, touched the top layer of Lekka and just died. Just died off. So I repotted this a while ago into a mixture of sphagnum and Lekka and it is doing much better. Um, again, there are a few issues inherent with using sphagnum with this and long term I would like it in an inorganic media. So I thought again, this might work quite well with the pumice and Lekka mix setup. And the third orchid that I'm going to be trying in this mix is the Phalaenopsis Cornu Servi variety FMA Tetaladia. Sorry, there's the tag. Um, this one, when root tips hit the top of the lecker, this is what we seem to get. And I have been trying to mist this down to combat that, but it just doesn't seem to enjoy lecker quite as much as the other summer blooming species that I've got. It just seems to need a little bit more moisture maybe. So I'm going to try it out in a semi-hydroponic setup with pumice and Lekka mixes. So I spoke to Melissa about this um, on here and she uses pumice a lot and she said that when she uses the kind of more self-watering setup, she'll mix it with a bit of lacquer. And I guess this is to help to increase the wicking efficiency maybe. I'm not, I'm working with pumice for the first time, so I'm not entirely sure how wicking it is. It did seem to be very absorbent though. So I'm gonna mix it with some lacquer and I'll put the top layer as just pumice. I have also ordered some small grade pumice that I'll be trying out with my Oncidiums at a later date. But for now, we've just got this more chunky pumice, which I'm going to try out with these three orchids in front of us. 
So I am just gonna start off with the nice easy one here. So my Sideria Japonica crossed with Ring Stylus Gigantia. And we can see you've got a root tip there, you've also got a root tip emerging there. So this will be a good time to test it out. It didn't arrive with very many roots, and this is actually the second time I've bought this cross. The first time I bought this cross, it was from Orchid Garden, and it just shriveled and died, and I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, so I bought another version of this, which is a bit more expensive, from Class N Orchids. It arrived with not very many roots, but it has grown new leaves for me, and you can see new root tips emerging there. So this one is definitely doing a lot better, but it just seems to be an incredibly fussy cross. So I think it's inherited the fussiness from the miniature version of the Sideria Deponica. And I think that combination with the Ring Stylish Gigantia is maybe not a particularly vigorous hybrid in my experience. I'm just gonna be using this little cup here as a semi-hydro pot. Predominantly pumice, it does have a little bit of lick uh, kind of layered through there. I'm not going to spray this off with hydrogen peroxide because I have already done that when I first got this plant. Okay, so I've tried to do the top layer as pretty much exclusively pumice and there is a mixture of small and large but I tried to pick out the smaller bits to put on the top. What I might do is when I get in a pumice um, mix that's a smaller mix, uh, a smaller grade, I may well take this off and put a smaller grade top layer but we're just going to have to see how this does in this setup and whether it does wick water efficiently to the top, I'm going to be monitoring that kind of every day to make sure that it's not drying out too much because this is such a fussy little orchid. Um, maybe that's not the best orchid to try in this setup, but moss long term, I'm having to change it quite a lot for this one because it seems to be degrading very fast where I'm having to keep it quite moist for this fussy little thing. Uh, Lekka, it didn't like the dry top layer. So yeah, let's give this a try and see how it goes. Maybe it'll need a smaller grade pumice, but for now, this is what we've got, and just pop the tag back in. Please like pumice, little orchid. I hope it does. So that's that one done. Now we're just gonna move on to the Cattleya violacea rosea, a variety dark lip. Okay, so we can see that this orchid enjoyed the mix of lecker moss and bark it was in. So it enjoys the moisture. I think because it's a seedling or a young orchid, it just needs the moisture that little bit more. And because it's a species, it's gonna be a little bit fussier. But you can see we've got lots of new root growth there. So that's a really great sign. I've just left those lecker beads attached because they're not gonna do any harm. And we will just pop this up. So again, I've tried to pop that one up with predominantly pumice at the top there and Lekka mixed throughout to increase the wicking efficiency of it. Okay, so last but not least, gonna take this one out of the pot and have a look at it. Now that was not particularly firmly anchored in the pot. Um, it hasn't grown that many roots since I got it actually. Um, so yeah, I would say this one did not like Lekka and Semi Hydro so much. So I'm just going to pot this one into a self-watering pot this time with a wick system. And unfortunately I used up that bag of pumice, so I had to use another bag that I ordered from Amazon. And the pieces are much more variable in size, so I'm going to put the bigger bits kind of at the bottom. It's going to layer more Lekka at the bottom of this one. Okay, so that is my Phalaenopsis, uh, my Sideria japonica costa brinca stylus gigantia, and my Cattleya violacea rosea, repotted into a mix of lecca and pumice in self-watering or semi-hydroponic setups. Um, we will see how efficient the pumice is at retaining water. It does seem to be a lot more moist than the lecca to kind of touch. Um, for the Phalaenopsis, I have done a more lecker heavy mix just because the pumice that I had seemed to be larger grade left over. So I've tried to kind of fill all the air gaps up with lecker and have more of a top layer of pumice. I might need to change this around depending on how moist the top is staying. Um, 
it's a little bit of a tricky one because a lot of the roots have become aerial roots for this one so I've got some very long roots kind of coming out of the pot um, I'm hoping that some of these when they do reactivate will kind of go back down in and I will try and encourage them to but ultimately they'll kind of go towards a favorable environment I believe um, for me the fact that it's not been successful really at producing roots that have gone down to the media when they have touched the lecker they've kind of dried up um, indicates that it wasn't a suitable media for them so all it's really got left are a few roots in the pot and some aerial roots as you saw so hopefully it will do better in this setup and I will keep you guys updated obviously this is an experimental setup so I don't really know what to expect any more than you guys so keep your fingers crossed for me and we will hope that it works and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be continuing to do many more updates on the experimental inorganic media setups. If you want to follow this series or enjoy this video then give this video a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular updates and I will see you guys later. Bye!